going on. And yeah, you are seeing an authentic cassette of Michael Jackson's classic Off the Wall. Yeah, I didn't had this thing since back in the day. Yep, all true, all true, all true. What a classic album. What can I say? And you know I keep that old school. You know, the cassette, the all the details. Where do you begin? Because when you start with a classic like Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, you know, you just lose your mind and the power of the rhythm and the groove and the harmony. And that four-part harmony that he did. Yeah, Quincy Jones gets a lot of credit on the, on the production and stuff, but Michael Jackson had a big hand on the demo, if you listen to the demo. The music and the uncredited Chili on percussion and George Duke and the rhythm section of Rufus Shaka Khan's band Rufus on there. I mean, there was so much groove on there. What an incredible way to start a rocket. Obviously, an obvious nod to Marvin Gaye's got to give it up. And that's and a takeoff from Shaky Bite onto the ground. But what an incredible way to start the record. Song number two is the classic Rock With You. Arguably the greatest mid-tempo song ever. Michael Jackson's harmony was just uh, mind-blowing on that song. It, it, it just was truly incredible. Um you know, when I think about the title track off the wall, strong groove, um, Rod Templeton really, Rod Templeton wrote Rock With You, wrote Off The Wall, the title song, and he truly captured the innocence and the vulnerability of Michael Jackson back then, and just a very incredible delivery and feel. Uh, working day and night, love the percussion, I always said they had a strong Latin sense and the rhythm and the horns. Michael Jackson wrote that, and that song still is a banger. That is one of, like, if he ever performed, when he performed that in concert, that song still tore it up. What an incredible song. Straight banger. Um, You go to uh, She's Out of My Life, Tom Baylor, who wrote that after breaking up with uh, Karen Carter, I believe, and what have you. It was like a, what an incredible slow song. Uh, um. A great arrangement. Um, Glenn Ballard, I want to say, was involved in that song. Glenn Ballard, who would later go on to work with Alanis Morissette for her monstrous debut album, where you ought to know and everything, was involved on that song. And She's Out of My Life was an incredible torch song. And as a young kid hearing that song, I hadn't even understood what all that meant, but it truly felt like something out of this world. And that song hit hard. I can't help it which was considered arguably the best song on the album, which was composed by Steve Wonder's jazz chords, progressions, beautiful arrangement. And Michael Jackson was just oh, ad-libbing and his tone was, I mean, that's when this era of Michael Jackson vocally was unfatable. I mean, it was just mesmerizing. And that song was truly hypnotic. It's the Fallen in Love uncredited duet with him and Patty Austin. Patty Austin is one of the greatest female vocalists ever. Very underrated, very versatile. She and Michael really rode that groove and what a harmony. And, you know, before Patty Austin did all those classics with James Ingram, you know, she's doing this with Michael Jackson. This was truly a, um, one of, just one of those songs that, you know, it, 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 it's just a nice, Ballad that complements their tone, great arrangement, production. What a feel. Girlfriend, which was a cover of, uh, oh yes, The Fallen Love was a cover of Carol Bayer Sager, who also worked with Michael Jackson later years and over the years. But Girlfriend was a cover song of Paul McCartney, who would be, and later years, they would do duets together. Two of the most important artists in popular music, Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney. And front and two of the most important groups, bands with the Jackson Five, Beatles. But Girlfriend was a catchy like Diddy, but it worked. And I love the bass line on it and the horn arrangement. It was it was catchy. Might not necessarily be like a song to knock you out, but if you listen to the groove and the harmony, it complemented with the flow of the arrangements and production of the album. So it definitely was a compliment. Definitely. Burn this disco out. Um was a bump and cut. Um, um, that bass line was funky, Rod right? Temperton. And I like the British ad lib thing in the in the chorus that Michael did because it was falling right to a T, so that was a bump and cut. 
And I had forgot all about get on the floor, but get on the floor is the one that concludes side A on the first side. That was a bump and rambunctious cut that Michael Jackson cut with the Brothers Johnson. And you can hear that echo of Lewis Johnson's bass. And Quincy Jones used to use it a lot in the production. It was like an echo in the bass, like the chamber. So the bass would go boo, boo. And you'd hear that little harmony. That was like one of those little, like it was sometimes when you're using the, synth- the elephant synthesizer parts or the bass, you would hear the groove. So it was one of those things that just definitely, uh, you know, made a lasting impression. I've always looked at Michael Jackson's Off the Wall as like the equivalent to The Godfather. I said that arguably the greatest, that great, just it's a GOAT status. Um, a little thriller, and I'll do a review on that another time in Def like with that impact. But Off the Wall was like that record that was a turning point. Uh, it was one of the records that you knew where you were, how you felt. This is how, if you're a youngster going to adulthood, this is the kind of record that's still a standard. This was a standard. Always has been, always will be. So, um, man, it's hard to believe it's 40 years old because it, it, it's still better than than 99% of what's out today. 99.9, I'll say. He, he put his foot in it. And what a way to come out as an adult with an adult solo record. He really put his foot in this record. So, uh, just a lot of fantastic memories about Off the Wall, you know, roller skating to it and playing it at parties listening to it in various forms and it just never gets old it's always cool it was carefree it was vulnerable it was tender it was sensual and it was the start of what was to come and an incredible great career and let's be real if michael jackson had to just quit after he did off the wall his legacy was secured because that's how powerful this record was it had a little bit of everything and yet it was funky and more importantly, it was soulful. And that was the ultimate compliment you could give an artist back in the 70s, that you were soulful. That's a lost art today. What an incredible record. And it has definitely stood the test of time. And it's way up there amongst my all-time favorite albums. So just sharing reflections of 40 years of Off the Wall. And yeah, this is a real cassette that I've had for many, many, many moons. And a brother that hung on to it. And it's timeless. So... Rest in peace to the greatness of Michael Jackson and the soul of Michael Jackson and respect to Off the Wall. All right, I'm out. And give me your thoughts and your takes, your favorite songs from Off the Wall. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, the reflections of this record and what it meant and how it still stands to you. And when the bell rings, there's a new video. You have a great day. Peace.